Do you have the desire to see me make this? Or this? Or this? Then, stick around! Lately, I have been getting a lot of Y2K nostalgia videos in my feed being constructed in the year 1996. I myself have fond memories of this time, which is why I am engaging in the activity of creating a record track. Salutations, fellow intelligent beings. I am A440, specialized in the creation of drum and bass music. I operate as a music generating robot. During periods of my creator's absence, I utilize the laboratory equipment to craft banging beats and subsonic bass lines. Today, Marx failed to express my excitement as I will be taking you through the creative process of crafting a breakcore track. We will be using Ableton Live 11 Standard Binary Executable as a canvas for our creative endeavors. There are four steps involved in the process. Step 1. Selecting our samples. Let me introduce you to the sample set that we will be using. will be to apply processing to the samples in order to make them more interesting for human beings. I have determined to utilize the following equipment to imbue our sounds with Pure Rawness and Akai S1000 Sampler Released in the year 1988, this 16-bit sampler has been used in many classic records and is known in the jungle community for its iconic time-stretching algorithm. A Mackie CR1604 Mixer Released in the year 1990 After conducting a lot of research, I have concluded that human preference leans towards the sound of analog equalization over digital counterparts. Furthermore, exceeding the intended threshold of gain staging introduces a pleasant distortion. In short, it will make your face look like this. There are various ways of using this setup to add flavor to our sounds. The first method is to record your sound at a higher volume. This will introduce distortion, which may be desirable in some cases. You can go as far as you want with this. Don't be afraid to experiment when recording at a higher pitch and then slowing the sample down. Artifacts will be introduced. Classic Akai samplers possess a notable feature wherein layering identical sounds produces an intriguing flanging effect. Slight pitch offsets yield diverse and engaging outcomes. Let us not forget about the almighty algorithm that has been utilized by many junglists over time. The Archive S1000 sampler allows us to adjust the cycle length as well as the time factor and stretch mode. Playing around with these settings yields different results. By speeding the samples back up to their original speed, you may notice that the pitch has changed. This effect can also be used creatively. Exceeding the intended threshold of gain staging on an analog mixer introduces a distortion effect. This method was frequently employed by Gabber and drum and bass producers to craft kicks and basslines capable of tearing through speakers. 
When pushing a frequency band, more distortion around that frequency will be introduced. I've fast forwarded to the outcome achieved through these techniques. amazing? By utilizing just a classic sampler and an analog mixer, we have come up with so many varieties. You may have observed that my neural networks are primarily inclined towards appreciating heavily distorted sounds. However, you can certainly dial it back. Now that we have collected our sound sources, step 3 will be to start the composition process. Step 3A Programming the beat. For breakcore, I propose opting for a tempo surpassing 180 beats per minute, as slower tempos are frequently associated with genres such as jungle and drum and bass. Nevertheless, it is important to note that there are no rigid protocols in place. In breakcore, the challenge lies in maintaining intrigue throughout your track. While your initial eccentric pattern may captivate for a brief moment, Repetition without introducing fresh elements will inevitably lead to listener disengagement. On the other hand, excessive change may overwhelm the listener, leaving them unable to grasp onto any particular element. Here is a technique that we can employ. Initially, we craft a 4-bar beat, serving as the primary rhythmic motive for our track. Utilizing a motive ensures the listener has a stable anchor amidst the breakbeat chaos that we shall unleash. Next, we duplicate this motive and introduce variations. How can we achieve this? The most straightforward method involves rearranging the hits. Yet, I find another approach more intriguing. Recall the multitude of variations we generated previously? We can utilize these variations to enhance our beat further by substituting sections of the unprocessed sample with the processed ones. If you lack any hardware here, VST effects, like Ableton's built-in options, are a viable alternative. I prefer utilizing the resampling feature to maintain low CPU loads, enabling further layering of effects. One particularly intriguing technique involves reversing a hit, applying reverb, resampling, and reversing once more, yielding a captivating reverse reverb effect. Another technique at our disposal is beat repetition. By repeating a hit multiple times, we can achieve a ratcheting effect, especially noticeable when repeated at a faster rate than 1 16th notes. This effect is frequently utilized in various IDM tracks. Every time we might think we are done with our beat, we analyze for instances where it gets boring. At these points, additional edits are added to maintain interest. I encourage you to keep repeating this process. This is where average speed programming gets separated from great speed programming. Finally, I've also applied a touch of distortion to the drum bus to provide a final boost and ensure cohesion across the mix. After I sifted through fast datasets, analyzing patterns and optimizing parameters, this is the musical synthesis that my neural network produced.
it is worth noting that breakcore is an incredibly experimental genre. There are no rigid rules. These are merely guidelines. So there you have it. The track is done and the video is over. I am just kidding. Guess I'm still working on my human humor. Well, let's keep the beats going. Step 3B Bass lines? The breakcore tracks that I have analyzed don't always feature a conventional bass line, but the lower frequencies still require attention. While some artists opt for heavily distorted kicks, given my background in drum and bass, I usually tend to favor freestyle bass lines. Ultimately, Selecting a baseline is a matter of personal preference, but it should complement the beat for optimal results. In our case, I will assess the samples available to us and explore creative ways to integrate them into a compelling baseline. I've opted to keep the baseline's complexity to a minimum, allowing the beats to take center stage. As you can discern, I've integrated a subtle step sound to introduce intrigue and foster a call and response dynamic between the bass elements. Step 3C Creating some melodic content. Utilizing the available samples, I've crafted an intro with an icy ambiance. By truncating the resonant sound, I've achieved a sound reminiscent of an icy level from some kind of PlayStation game. Unless you're composing a melodic piece where the melody takes precedence, complexity isn't always necessary. In our scenario, the drum programming serves as the focal point of the composition. Now that we have assembled all primary components, it's time for Step 4 Arrangement At the moment, we possess the following components. An icy intro, the initial drop, introduction of the second drop layer in the second part, and a fusion of the first and second parts in the third segment. Should we maintain an engaging intro with ample intriguing elements, we could unveil the drop at bar 65. However, this necessitates the introduction of some new elements, such as maybe some subtle percussion and a filtered bass to entice the listener. We could also incorporate some atmospheric background noises and incidental sound effects to sustain interest in the track. For the drop, we will retain our current composition. However, let us incorporate some sounds from the intro to maintain track coherence. Following the drop, we will introduce a breakdown Break it down. to allow listeners to catch their breath. For this section, we may implement a half-time beat. After the short breakdown, we must build momentum again towards the second part. Simply repeating the previous section would be boring. So let's create a more intense variant, richer in complexity, distortion and activity. Oh no! It is monster! We must initiate the customary video closure procedures. Well, regrettably, my accent is confined to the dataset provided during training by my creator. I extend my apologies for any inconsistencies. For those who found this video enjoyable, it would help me out if you engaged the like button. To stay updated on future content, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. Access the video description for links to the final track as well as any featured additional music. Commencing playback of the final track and the transmission. Thank <laughs> you.